Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the best way you could prepare for the USMLE Step 1 as efficiently as possible. So before we get started, make sure to check out my new website if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one or group tutoring, link will be in the description below. Okay, so here's some quick evidence that my study methods have been effective even though I've taken my step one exam over a year and a half ago. So a few months ago, I decided to take the AMBOSS step one self-assessment just for fun which was last Feb, and um, I scored 279. According to Amboss, only one other person scored 279. Now, don't get me wrong, my score may be slightly overinflated because there were a few questions that I felt like I may have seen before. Plus, this is a pass-fail cohort, which makes it less competitive. But I would say that the true score is still around a 270 plus, which is still 100th percentile. Anyway, now of course step one is a pass-fail exam, so you no longer need to aim for such scores. So let's talk about the quickest and most efficient ways to pass this exam. Okay, so you may have noticed that there are so many resources for this exam because it was once the most important aspect in the matching process and so many resources were created for students to master this exam but now that it's pass fail i picked the most important resources that you're most probably going to need and i don't think you'll need to use anything other than those resources to pass the exam of course there is no one size fits all here so you're basically going to be switching between those resources based on several factors like your foundation, where you're currently in, in your prep, um, what year you are in med school, or even if you're a graduate. So for example, if you're a graduate, the last time you may have been exposed to the basic sciences, maybe four or five years ago. And so it may be difficult for you to jump straight into the questions. In that case, it might be a good idea to start out with something like Boards and Beyond and slowly integrate it with question banks, U World, AMBOSS, then um, the NBMEs. And usually I put them in this order because from personal experience, the exam is most similar to the NBME, then AMBOSS, then U World. So it's better to keep them in the order of listed here. Um, in fact, there is a new study that showed students who used AMBOSS for step two, um, AMBOSS only, scored 2.1 points higher than students who used UWorld only. Okay, um, the other resource, um, Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. The reason I added, I added them here is because both uh, Micro and Farm are high yield on both steps, especially step one, of course. And um, the visual mnemonics in Sketchy are an efficient way to help you memorize those important points. So when you watch a Sketchy video, you're more likely to retain what you've learned for a longer period of time when compared to a non-visual mnemonic video. And finally, Anki, also an efficient way of memorizing certain things. Um, try and use it only for your weaknesses. So, for example, if you're having trouble memorizing certain things in immunology, you could do the immunology deck in Anki. Or maybe even create your own flashcards for your incorrect questions in the NBMEs. But I definitely wouldn't recommend doing an entire pre-made deck of 30,000 cards or something since the exam is pass-fail and I don't think that's an efficient investment of your time. But then again, it depends on where you are in your prep or your foundation. So for example, if you have a really good foundation in the basic sciences or you've recently finished the basic sciences at med school, you may not have to watch any of those videos or do any flashcards and you could straight away start with question banks. So the take home point here is try to utilize or tailor those resources to your weaknesses. Um, so sometimes when I advise students to go through two or three question banks, they feel like it may be too much for a pass fail exam. So again, guys, it depends on several factors, and the most important of which is your starting percentage in question banks. 
If you're starting out with 20 or 25% correct, then it might be a good idea for you to go through two or three question banks. If, however, you started out with 75% correct, then, for example, of course, then maybe one question bank would be enough. Either way, guys, there is no harm in solving more questions. If anything, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're increasing your chances of passing step one, and you're also going to improve your performance on step two. Because when you solve questions and you improve your critical thinking skills, this will also help you when you're solving questions on step two. And aside from the critical thinking skills, in terms of actual content, there's approximately a 60% overlap between step one and step two. If anything, here's an interesting fact. Both steps have the same content outline or specification on the official USMLE website, which means they're allowed to ask you anything from the basic sciences on your step two exam. Um, I'm not saying this happens very often, but it could happen because essentially both steps have a single integrated uh, content outline. And that's it, guys. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.